Hi everyone, welcome to another learning episode. Today, I'll be sharing with you the step-by-step -step guide in coding and theming qualitative data. Now, we all know that the main method in gathering data for qualitative research is through interviews, focus group discussions, and observations. Now, the first thing that we're going to do in coding our qualitative data is to prepare our interview transcripts. We can do that by transferring our recorded interviews in written transcription. We have to listen repeatedly to our recorded interviews with our conversation partners. Before pre-pandemic, we usually conduct interviews face-to-face, -face, but now because of this health crisis that we are facing today, most of the researchers conduct researches or interviews virtually and then recorded it. So that these recorded videos will be listened by the researchers repeatedly and then they have to encode the responses of the interviewees in a verbatim manner and transfer the recorded interviews into written transcriptions. Once we transfer these recorded interviews into written transcription, that's the time we have to browse the whole interview transcript and as, as a whole and check if we have saturated the data or not. Once we haven't saturated the data, this means that our information or the responses of the conversation partners are not yet enough and we have to go back to them. We have to contact them and set another round of interview for us to saturate the data. But if we think and as we read our interview transcript and we think that we have gathered all the necessary information that we ask from our conversation partners and every information is already adequate and enough, then there's no need for us to go back to our conversation partners and ask them for another set of interview. So if you think and if you have read your interview transcript and you think that everything is saturated, we will now proceed to our second step, which is coding our units of relevant meaning. Now, these units of relevant meaning can be word, phrases, clauses, or sentences, as long as they carry relevant meaning. How can we identify that this certain information should be coded and this is relevant? First, the information must be aligned to our research question. Second, the information is something that surprises the researcher. It surprises him or her in the sense that it's her first time hearing the information or it surprises you because it has emotional value or also it surprises you because it is something that is super confidential and the interviewee entrusted you with that information even though it is highly sensitive. Next, um, a piece of information or a word is relevant if the interviewee himself or herself really said that this certain information is essential or important. Another thing that could help us identify that this information must be coded if it is repeated in the whole interview or if it is repeated by the conversation partners in most of their responses during the interview. Another thing, the information could be relevant to if it is similar to the concept, theory, articles, or information you have read from a book or from another credible sites or information. Now, as a qualitative researcher, you are the interpreter of the data. You encode any information or word you deem relevant or important. So, it's, it's as a researcher, do not hesitate to code plenty of information, even 100 or more than 100, as long as you think it is important and can be relevant in the analyzing part. So how do we code? What are the different manners of coding? Other researchers do color coding, while I personally, as a qualitative researcher, I am more comfortable in number co coding. So I number each word that I think relevant or each statement or clause that I think relevant from one up to a hundred or more. So in this way, I could automatically count how many units of relevant meanings I generated already from the start up to the end of analyzing the interview transcript. If you are done coding, you may either use different codes. You can search sa internet codes that you're comfortable doing. So after we coded all the information that we needed in the second step, on the third step, the thing that we have to do is we have to discard words, phrases, clauses, or sentences that are no longer coded and we deem irrelevant already since they are no longer part 
to the third step, which is the clustering of units of relevant meaning. So once we process our units of relevant meaning, the next thing that we're going to do is to table or to list all the units of relevant meaning and discard the unnecessary words, phrases, sentences that we deemed irrelevant. So here is how it will look like. So it would be better for you to discard all the other information so it would be easier for us to conduct the third step which is clustering the units of relevant meaning. From the word cluster, it means we group similar codes or similar labels. So we have to read each code. We have to check if number 1 and number 2 and number 27, they have the similar thought, their essence is common, then we have to group them together as one group. It's the same method that we're going to do for the rest of the units of relevant meaning. If we think that number 13, number 16, and number 21, they have the same thought, they are delivering the same message, then we have to group this code into one group. Then the fourth thing that we're going to do once we are already done clustering these units of relevant meaning is to label them or to put a theme already in these certain groups. Now I'm going to show you an example based from the previous study that I conducted. This is what I did. So this was taken from my study, The Lived Experiences of Teacher Handling Inclusive Senior High School Classroom with Students with Hearing Impairment. So as I asked them about their experiences, these are the codes that have common essences or, or common thought. First, they think that teaching in an inclusive classroom sharpens professionalism. And they also think that handling in an inclusive classroom, a teacher needs to thoroughly think about the delivery of the subject matter. And at the same time, they have to exert extra effort for lesson planning and material preparation. So as you can see here, these three have common essences. So, the next thing that we have to do is to label this cluster since they belong into one cluster. And I label this one as going extra mile. Now, we'll have another example. This thing. So, these four codes also have common essences or similar thought. Um, the teacher feel that since they are not fully trained as bad teachers so they feel that they couldn't feed comprehensive lessons to their students and at the same time they couldn't really assess if they have learned the lesson of the day or not which means they couldn't give proper assessment to their special education students another thing that they responded was they could not give the best mode of learning because they felt that they are not equipped Another thing is they don't have the luxury of time to work for a module or individualized activities. So since all of these talks about their negative experiences, the disadvantages of teaching in an inclusive senior high school classroom, so we have to label these codes, we have to group these codes into one cluster, and then the next thing that we're going to do is to label it. I label this one as feeling inadequate. This means the teacher felt inadequate since they don't have enough training as special education tra teacher. So this is how we do the last two process in coding and theming qualitative data. So these are the steps that we're going to take once we code and theme our qualitative data. Just to review, first, we have to prepare our interview transcripts. Second, we have to code and label the units of relevant meaning. Once we're done with the step, the next thing that we're going to do is to cluster these units of relevant meaning. Fourth thing is we have to label or we have to put themes in the different groups that we establish. So these are the things that we're learning for today about coding and theming qualitative data. I'm so thankful for those who continue to support this learning community. I know I couldn't reply to all of your messages and all of your questions since I'm not really doing this full time. But anyway, thank you so much for all the kind words you extended. And if you want to ask help for your research struggles, if you have a lot of questions that were not answered, kindly check our website, kindly check our Amphra Tutorial Center. We are offering research services for you. If, we are, if you are currently doing your qualitative research, we accept 
um, qualitative services and at the same time tutorial services if you have any struggles doing your research. I'm going to be linking our website and at the same time our FB page here. You may visit Emfred Tutorial Center if you have questions and if you want us to help you with your difficulties. So we are just here for you. Thank you so much for tuning in in this channel and for continue watching all of my videos. See you in our next episode.